Hi, this is Kim Nelson. And in this tutorial, I'm going to continue to move forward with refining uh, this magnolia cuff. There are some things that showed up in the first level of refining um, that I'm not crazy about. So I am going to correct them. I also need to put in the stone um, and decide how it's going to be set because that will define everything else I'm going to do. Uh, specific concerns. I don't care for the way this follows so parallel to that surface. I think it should curl up. I don't like how it's getting muddy in here, in the center, how those petals come together. I don't think this is reading properly. Uh, this petal should be completely above this petal. Also, um, I think instead of a straight extrusion coming down here on these thicker petals, I'm going to first off consider doing a offset surface on the thicker one here. The challenge is, is casting. There's a limit to how much um, tolerance the casting is going to take. Um, so uh, that's kind of problematic. And there is a limit to how thin these can get. These petals rest on top of the shank. So there really isn't a, a good way other than once again I could do an offset surface but I don't want these to be a hat sitting up on top of a shank. Uh, the cuff will rock back and forth and they'll tend to get hooked on things so I do want to look at it though. I want to take a look at some of these things and see if I can improve on them before I sculpt this. I believe um, it's been a while since I've done this, but I believe that that is the final block that I used. Easy to verify. Indeed. It's the same. And I would like to have my, shank, uh, my cuff I'm a little bit curious. Okay, this is the same surfaces with the offsets done. I mean, with the extrusions done. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute here and refamiliarize myself with the file. So there's the um, flat. Okay, so um, I have here the block parts before they were flowed. Um, these are not attached to history, so I want to go back and use the original surfaces that are. As I pointed out, I would like to um, break the parallel relationship between these two petals. In fact, I think I would like to curl up the point. I think that's my main emphasis here. I 
I think I want to do that more than I actually want to increase thickness. Maybe pick it up a little bit. That's going to make this want to be picked up a little bit. Okay, and um, I wanted these two surfaces elevated up enough that they clear the others. The way these come together there doesn't bother me at all. I'd like to lift the heel of this up a little. So I have a distinct elevation difference there. This is flowing very close to the tops of the other petals. I think I would like to move this corner up a little bit. and ripple the front a little bit. Okay, and now I had talked about what would happen if I offset surfaces. with history. Minus two. That's as thick as I would consider doing it. Take a look at how that plays with the shank, the cuff. That actually works well with that. I think I could probably bring that so that it drops down more in line with the shit with the cuff as it comes into the center. To affect that. That was a extruded curve um, normal surface. That's important because instead of giving me a straight up and down here, it's going to cut that back a little bit and give me a little bit of relief. I 
I'm going to hide that for now. I'm going to rebuild this surface. 5-5. Five, five. That will break history. I'm going to go ahead and untrim it. Well, I'll leave it trimmed for now. And I can just move those points straight up and down. So I've remade it into a simple surface. So take the back row. Well, apparently a second to the back row. And move it down. Take this row, move it down, and then back to the hind two and bring them down so that this at least is relating further back in to the cuff. In fact, I will let it go ahead and come down enough to where it is largely flat. I can do that by actually projecting these curves to the seaplane and these back points also. Sorry, called them curves, points. Project them also to the seaplane. Now that they're flat to the seaplane, they still want to be lowered a little bit more. Actually, I'll leave it. Now this is no longer going to be the right shape because I was moving points straight up and down which will break the outline. That's fine. Because I'm going to untrim it. I'm going to bring back the cut surface. Extend it. and extend it. Rejoin this. Trim, much to my surprise. Oh, not yet. This needs to be extended a little further still. Join these together, trim the offset surface, select the offset surface, trim the sidewall. Join these together. I will not join the top surface to them yet because that will break history if I do. I like how that's working. There's a reason. Um, uh, doing this, you can see already that it has reduced some of this bulk. But the compromise is that some of these pedals will be using that and some of them won't, so it won't be consistent. And the lack of consistency can be a concern, uh, but in this case, I think it's worth it. So, I'm going to do the same process here. Surface, offset surface. I'm not going to bother with the history this time because I know my workflow, it won't matter. Uh, minus two, rebuild, extrude curve normal to surface, this time make sure it's long enough that I don't have to extend surfaces. Hide this for a minute so I can do what I want here.
turn on the points and drop the back half of this to the seaplane. Drop these two also to the seaplane. Grab this row and these two points. Move them down just a little bit lower. Actually, I don't want to move these. I want to drop this edge so it's not as noticeable. In fact, I'm going to clear it. I think that would be smarter. I would like to do the same thing over here. I'm trimming it turning on its points and the same idea I'm going to grab the points that are close to the edge here I'm going to move them down until I clear the bottom of this like that that means this won't be long enough anymore is fine. Surface edit tool. Untrim all. Join. Trim. Oh, it needs to be longer still. <laughs> Boy. Okay. Join. Trim. Trim, join, done. You see that that doesn't line up anymore, so I'm going to untrim that. Use this to retrim it. The reason it doesn't trim is because I have changed its outline. Whenever you move points up and down instead of normal to surface, for example, uh, you're going to end up changing. Now what I don't understand, oh I see, this has to still be a little bit longer on this side. I keep underestimating how deep these extrusions have to go. And because it's a uh, extrusion, I have to explode it before I can extend it because Rhino considers an extrusion to be a type of block object for the purposes of history. It's kind of tedious sometimes. So, got that. Trim and trim. Except for I trimmed the wrong way. And join. Which is interesting because that means I trimmed the wrong way over here as well. Easy mistake to make. Considering that I don't have the original surfaces visible in the file.
bring back those top surfaces so I can see how that's playing. That works. Okay, do I feel the need to do that anywhere else? There was a goodness to doing it here and here. I don't know, um, because if I do it here, then I'm going to want to do it here. And once I do it with this surface, particularly now that I've lifted that point up a long ways, looking at it now in retrospect, maybe too far. Um, this thick kind of cake like stacking is working well over here especially because I have several thin areas that need that support. Okay, I'll consider it for these two. That's it. So, same process then. Offset surface. Minus two, F5 rebuild, unfrim all. Um, extrude curve normal to surface. Longer than I could possibly ever imagine wanting it, because I really don't want to have to keep doing that extend surface thing. Hide. Simplify my viewport with the details that are there. Hit F10, bring up my points. Project those to C plane. I think that's enough. I would like them to drop below. The edge. Just a little bit. But other than that. Maybe bring this one down as well. I think that's fine. Bring back the cutter surface to cut with. Trim. Trim. Now see, that's a problem. Because that is going to leave this huge area can't have it. The interior of this surface also needs to be dropped. On the outside, it can be elevated. But on the interior, I want it down. Okay. Trim and trim.
Still not ideal. That's what I thought. I'm going to need to drop all the points. Okay, so dropping all of the currently elevated points. I don't know why that one is. Um, there we go. By the way, this is nice that I have third degree uh, curvature on these because it means that adjusting these points doesn't really have that much impact over here on the interior. This one did have a bit too much, so I'm going to lift it back up. I'm going to look here and see that I've got everybody down. I've got a couple of points up in the air here. So there we go. I'm going to select all of the points just because I want once again to drop this a little bit to, to, to lower it a touch. And actually, there are a few points that really aren't flat yet. There we go. Grab all of these and just drop them down enough that they are not flush with the bottom of this. Because flush isn't, is never good. All right. Trim and trim. Don't tell me that I am now too shallow. No, it's long enough. and trim and join so this strange little organic tray that's better this does curve up a little bit to meet that I could curve it up to be thinner. I know it's tedious to watch in a video. It's not any less tedious to do in person. But these are dimensional decisions I'm making that have serious impact. On how heavy the piece looks. So it's worth doing. Yeah, I like that better. I have one more I'm going to play with. That's over here. So it's the same sequence. Untrim all. Rebuild. Turn on the points. I am going to want all of the um, deep interior points to come down, like so. It becomes a question at that point as to why bother doing this, so instead of dropping those points, I will drop these. too much. So I'll drop these. Once again, I'm just trying and now 
now that I've got that, the interior needs to come down. points left straight. Okay. Just going to grab the whole surface. Move it down a little bit. So I don't have that tangency on the bottom. Oh, I haven't created the cutting surface yet. Extrude normal to surface. Way too long. Trim. And trim and join. And that's it. The last thing is the um, tip of this is, is tipped up too far. I cannot afford to do a two millimeter offset for this. It'll be too thick. Create an undercut. I will do. I don't want an undercut. So that'll be good. Now, for some reason along the way, the um, curve for this has gotten a little bit adulterated. So I'm uh, in the process of moving and shaking. So I'm going to create a new one just so that I can extrude this down. Too deep, I can delete that curve. Now I don't want to confuse it with the ones that are attached to history. Okay, so I believe I can just borrow a bunch of these from the deck. And that's probably it. These would be better off uh, if I can just move them straight up, hopefully. I can find an object snap that will allow me to do that. An end. There we go. And I can't really access it. It has to be on this top surface. Is there an end here? This looks like a poly surface. Uh, once you doing extrusions from uh, any end snap at all I would take. There we go. There. That way I don't have to re-extrude that. Okay, everybody else needs their own extrusion again. to copy these surfaces and paste them because I don't want to use the originals. I don't want to damage history. Turn off all of the originals. Okay. 
I can join these together and these together and these together and these together. This curve needs a new extrusion. You can join these together. That did not want to join nicely. I'll check that out in a minute. Um, I've turned off the curve, so I'll just duplicate the edge. Extrude straight down longer than I need and join these together. Okay. Get a cutting plane for all of this. Check the direction. And Boolean difference. That's interesting. Leave that alone for a minute. See, I'm getting a an extra surface, which means it's giving me a problem. All right, fine. Rather than fight it with the booleans, I'll just trim. those two. Now the ones that are slightly uh, below and above these two, I do need to do a boolean for. Okay. Some of these need caps. Looks like this one I needed a Boolean. I'll just hide it. Okay. Check it for naked edges. None. 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 Oop, that has naked edges right there. That needs to be capped. So those are all workable. Nine closed solids, that's what I want to see. So that's that. Now, I still have to put a stone in it. And I um, would also like to lift the center of this up. I don't know if it's important. And I think I made it too low. Yeah, I did. I'm normally quite opposed to doing a 
Okay, jetting, but I'm close enough to the end that I don't mind. First, I'm going to create a copy of this, paste it, and put it into storage. Because once I do cage editing, the original will be gone. Bounding box, world. X point, I'm going to want to have something even numbered and fairly high. I'm going to say 15, 13. Um, why is that's fine everything else is fine don't like having the cage the same layer color so I'll remedy that it allows me to lock the geometry itself so when I'm selecting control points I'm not constantly fighting with selecting geometry as well grab that central row of points and do a non-uniform scale. Point snap. And really as simply as that, I think I have Oh, could be a little taller still. It's interesting because it makes it look as though the initial need to drop that has been uh, deleted by my having built the level of the flowers up enough in the center. So, non-uniform scale. Picking that whole center section up a ways. It's kind of warbly and organic, but considering it's going under flowers, see that's too much. Okay, there are some interesting things going on here uh, that I will need to address. I'm going to be sculpting this in sculpting software, so I will take care of those things later for now. That's fine. In fact, that is now ready to go into sculpting, aside from the stone. the stone. Can't recall if I've already done the stone or not for this. I don't think I have. No. That's curious though because I remember drawing it. That should not be on that layer. That should be on the storage objects layer. Yeah, here it is. Right there. Bring that out. And move it down. Okay. So, making a capuchon is a very easy surfacing problem. Draw a curve, center line straight up. 
It's always helpful if you have the actual stone, but for this purposes, I've worked with enough calves that I'm confident I'll get it right, or relatively right. Quad here, and blend curve. Always be paying attention when you're modeling so that if something looks wrong, and rail evolve. Profile, rail, axis, start, end, done. So this is a prong setting that I've designed. Um, cap this. So I need a back sheet. I always need a back sheet. Um, for a cabochon, and I'd prefer not to have it be exactly the size of the bottom of the cab. So, I'm going to just offset it a little bit. 0 0.5, 0.2, 0.2. Oh, not that. 0.2. And then I will extrude a plate. one millimeter. Solid cap. So I have this. Now the prongs for this, they are located organically. And I don't want them to be right on the quadrant. I want it to feel asymmetrical. And I'll start this out at 1.5 and make it This is going to have enough prongs that I think I can do at 1.5. Okay, so there's that. The thing is, I want this to be moved out enough from the center of the stone so that it barely bites into the cap. So there's one. I'm going to make copies of it. about that same amount of bite in. Now, if for creative reasons I wanted to make the prongs at the other end thinner, I could do that, and I may do that. In fact, I think I'll do it from here forward. So. I'll make this one a 1.2. It's too small. 1.3. Get it the same distance out so the girdle is just nicking in.
and then copy it. One more size. And this one I'll make 1.1. 1 .1. So that I have this kind of uh, random feeling. I would like a big one up here, actually, I've decided. So there are my prong locations and prong diameters. So I need to draw prong wires. Center snap. Both sides. Straight up. And I will copy that. Actually, I can copy that or I can, yeah, I'll do both. I will copy this wire. For the multiple sizes, I have all three sizes here at this end. The length of this. I have these long tapered uh, claws, so I'm going to want a long prong for the jeweler to work with. Um, the way I normally would do a cab is I would picture how far it needs to bend over to catch the stone, let's say here, doing like an arc coming back up. and then give the jeweler at least another millimeter. Give them two. Above that. Now one. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw a couple of cutting planes. Um, one at this point and one at the bottom of the setting. them to trim off those prongs. And then I'm going to make the actual prong. Solid pipe. Diameter 1.5. I might want to assist the jeweler a little bit and taper these up a little bit to begin with. So I'm going to do another cutting plane. Yeah, about there. That's good actually. Do an intersection. So I can do a variable. Um, pipe. Pipe. Base is going to be 1.5 diameter. The top is going to be one millimeter. Point for next diameter 
because this point object should be also 1.5. Now see how that's caving on the side? Just not liking the shape of the of the pipe. It's acceptable what I had initially, but I thought I could improve it. I might not be able to. And after this try, if it's not better, I will. What's interesting is I'm getting this um, twist, and there's no reason for that. Pipe. I'm going to hold the shift key. That's 0.9 again, and I'm still getting it. Okay, when you have this much trouble and it's fighting you, um, I hate to say it, but use old school techniques. Curve and snap. Diameter 1.5, copy. Circle diameter 0.9. One rail sweep. Rail, section, section, section. I'm really trying hard <laughs> to make this do what I want it to do. I don't want it to do a bottle sort of form, but I'm done fighting it. Cat Planer Hills. First prong. All right, where else do I have 1.5s? I want the center of the sphere. Center. Center, center. And actually, I've decided to put them everywhere. These 1.3s I will scale in location. Scale 2D. One point three divided by one point five. Same. This one one point one divided by one point five. Okay, so that's the setting. After much ado, there's the setting. Um, the other thing I'm going to want to have with this setting is a cutter. I'm going to give this two millimeters. 
to support the stone. Actually, 1.7. At 1.5. Yeah, 1.7 is better. And see, I, I hate this. I won't curse Rhino 7 again, but it's very annoying. So, this cutter will allow me to open up the setting later. That will come very, very late in the modeling process. But it's an important feature. Okay, setting is done. Going to Boolean together the various components. Before I do, I will copy, paste, group, store. Solid union. Before a union, I decided I would like to fill at this edge. Point two, and now I'll fill it. I'll join Boolean Union. Connect them all together. Put them on the same layer with stone. Put this on the same layer as the stone as well. All of this I can delete. Group everybody together. And now I'm ready to flow of the things that I have prepared. Before I do that, however, I would like to position the setting the flower. Now, I do have a challenge in that I want that setting, I need that setting to break free of every petal. Take it up too high and then bring it down slow. There we go. Too far. Like so. Now, what I want you to notice is how far out of this that is, set, that is sitting right now. That is not ideal. So, I am going to rock the setting. Back. Because for this design, this highly organic floral design, it's fine. It's not a problem. Okay. Paste in the one I just copied out, explode it. 
I only want one surface, delete the rest. Analyze mass properties area centroid to get the center of that. Curve tool. I need two curves. I need a very long curve. running all the way through. And I need another fairly long curve running from side to side. The running from side to side might be a challenge because this comes off of an offset curve. Yes, yeah, that is not useful to me at all. So I'm going to need to pull that curve down here. necessary I will pull that curve see the problem is even from the stone there is a a strange angling there that I don't set a seaplane Draw an ellipse. Diameter. Set an ellipse. I see plane, sorry. There we go. Draw a straight line. Here we go, extend that curve. And type in 20 millimeters so it's plenty long. There. A lot of work to get that settled, but it is at least settled. rotate this to position, I'm going to use a 3D rotate. That's why I needed the horizontal curve. And then I'm going to use the long vertical curve, like a trombone slide. Take a look. That works. Okay, so I, I do have problems um, with this, obviously, um, because it doesn't fit all the way down in. And my setting needs to fit all the way down in. But that's not hard to fix. Let 
the biggest challenge is going to be that I've Booleaned these together. Copy, paste, put it on a layer I can use. Orient two points. If I want to be certain, I can orient three points. Let's do that. Copy, no scale, no. Center snap only. Use the three large settings in the back. Control Shift click. I need to set a C plane. Actually, I don't. I can use this um, trombone slide. To give that enough depth to bite all the way down in. and then grab the bottoms of each one of these. And move them along the trombone slide as well. Ah, now I didn't expect that. I can't have that, because that'll change the taper. So. Set C plane. Extract surface. Taking the bottoms off. Duplicate border. Extrude straight down. One direction only. And deeper than the setting. Delete the curves. Join these together. Cat planer holes. Fill at the edge. And Boolean. Before I Boolean, copy, paste, group, put in storage. Boolean union. Done. Replace that with this. And there we go. Now I'm tired of looking at this, so I'm going to put it. a separate layer, but I am going to group these all together. I don't 
need the curves, or do I? I'm going to group put these all in the same layer and group them, and then group everything. Group these, and then group it all. That way, as I move things, as layers turn off and on, they all still all move together or flow together, which is even more important. Okay, so there it is. There's going to be a problem here, um, which I will address in the sculpt. There's not enough room to set that stone. Um, everything still needs to be lifted up a hair. because this petal is biting in. Um, actually, the easiest solution to this is probably going to be to just move it out. Word. To give that prong enough room to be set. And that is this ring finished to the next level. Blow it. And then lastly, the setting. Rigid equals yes. that's workable that is so by the way that should have flowed up a copy of this as well which it did which is also still rigid organize my layers just a little bit because this becomes very confusing all on a different layer. Not bad. So that's it for this video. Uh, the next video, I will take this into sculpting software and I will do the final sculpting on these pedals. But overall, Not bad. A 
lot of the elevation concerns have been addressed. And what needs to be addressed can be done in the sculpting software. Um, thanks for watching.